How's it going guys? Tonight we start a short series based off a common household ingredient. Uh, for the next couple weeks we're going to talk about salt and, and what it means to us, right? Now you might ask, how are we going to spend that much time talking about salt over the next couple weeks? You know, but I often think we underestimate the uses for salt, all the uses. The whole premise for this series is actually based in Matthew 5.13. I want to share that verse with you and then we'll dig a little bit deeper into what it means. The verse says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. Now, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus challenges those that are listening to live as the salt of the earth. You know, that phrase is now used to describe people that personify the, like the best qualities of humanity. I think it's kind of funny how the secular world ascribes goodness in, in a person's life to salt of the earth when it was Jesus that gave us that challenge all along. You know, but the call to be salt isn't just for us to live a good life. Salt has a purpose. Actually, it has several purposes. Uh, and the truth, the same is true for you and me. Tonight, we're going to look at salt's ability to season and how that translates into our lives. Now, salt for the most of us is something we just put on our mashed potatoes, right, to make them taste better. But salt serves a lot of other purposes as well. It was and still is used as a bartering currency in some countries. Salt was a huge part of biblical life because all the different functions that it had. Uh, it's used as an antiseptic. Yeah, I think like when you get a cut and you go to the ocean and it feels better afterwards. Um, it was used as fertilizer, but only in small amounts. Actually, it helps the nutrients break down into the soil. But if you use too much salt on the ground, it can actually ruin the ground to the point that nothing will grow again. Uh, historically, salt's been used that way to punish nations after military victories. They would salt the fields so that no more food could be grown there, and it took away the, the nation's ability to provide for itself. Tonight's lesson is going to focus on the seasoning aspect of salt. Now, salt is used to make things taste better, and that's why it comes in these little tiny little packages inside your, your silverware packs, right? Salt enhances the flavor of your food by decreasing the amount of bitterness and increasing the enjoyable aspects of food. You watch enough Food Network, guys, and you're going to pick up on shows like Chopped. That's one of my favorites, right? And, and the importance of salting your food regardless of the rest of the dish. Fancy coffee houses, you might not know this, they even add salt to their coffee grinds in their brew baskets when they brew coffee to help cut some of the bitter notes that come out of roasted coffee beans. I'm sure this is probably way more than you guys wanted to know about salt, but the reason I share all this and did all this research is to get a better idea of what Jesus was calling us to be like when he calls us to be salt in Matthew 5. It's way more than we understand if we just stick to the, the salt shaker at the house, right? Since salt is a seasoning agent, that means Jesus expects us to be a seasoning agent in this world. What in the world does that even look like? It means that any environment we're in as Christians should be better because we're there. You know, we should improve our school with our presence. Your sports team should be better because of you being on that team. Our homes should be better than, than the average home because it's filled with people that are living out the command to be salt in the world. You know, in my 5 for 5 devotion today, I talked about one easy way to be salt in this world is simply to be kind. That's an easy place to start. Being kind at school, being kind to teammates, being kind at home are all great ways to enhance the environment that you are in. You know, there have been times with all my kids when I see them around teammates. It could be soccer, gymnastics, whatever, uh, cross country. And their teammates might be messing around, doing something coach doesn't want them to do, or they could be making some, some rude jokes or possibly using language that's not enhancing anything. And when I see my kids around those situations, I, I kind of... I, I, really focus in. I want to see them be different. Not in a weird like walking away with your fingers in your ears kind of way, but, but to make an obvious effort not to blend in to that kind of behavior. Honestly, it is easier to blend into that, right? Not to stand out, just to kind of go along with it. But that's when you allow your salt to become stale. You don't have to correct them every time that they mess up. That's gonna, it's a great way to ruin friendships, right? But you can choose to not join in. Over time, they're going to notice that you behave differently. You have different standards and, and that you're unwilling to compromise those standards. That is being salt in the world. In the book of Mark, Jesus uses the salt analogy again. Mark 9, 50 says this. It says, salt is good, but if the salt, salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. 
once salt has lost its taste, you can't make it salty again. There's no re-salting process, right? When it comes to our ability to season the world around us, it's important that we don't compromise. Once we've lost saltiness in other people's eyes, we can't really restore it. I don't know about you guys, but I've been in some places to eat where the salt shakers, they look older than me and that they haven't really been refilled or touched since maybe the 80s. And when you taste that kind of salt, it lacks the, the taste and it lacks the impact on your food, right? Sometimes you have to like dump it down in your hand and make sure it's actually coming out. You know, it's just, it's gross. And where fresh salt, when it's like the good stuff, it makes an immediate impact on the taste of your food. So how do you let your salt go stale? I think that we let our salt go stale when we allow the behaviors of this world to slip into our lives to the point that we, that we don't look, act, or respond any different than the rest of the world. When our language matches the world's, we're stale. When our choices reflect worldly priorities instead of eternal priorities, we're stale. When people can tell the difference between us and our lost friends, then we're fresh. You know, there's a balance to be found. We, we don't want to be so different that our lost friends think we're just too weird to be of any significance in their lives, but we also don't want to blend into the patterns of this world. So we keep our salt fresh by being kind, by living by a different set of standards. What are some other ways you guys can think of? You know, in the passage from Mark 9, Jesus says that our saltiness should result in peace between us. That sounds funny, right? Because the term salty today typically means someone who's angry or irritated or hard to deal with. Those people aren't going to be very peaceful with others. As a matter of fact, they're, they're not peaceful at all. But living in peace with each other is another way the world is going to see that something's different about us. And it's going to allow us to enhance the world around us. Romans 12, 18 echoes the same call when it says that if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. We don't always have to agree with everyone, everything that someone else says or believes to live at peace with them. And I think, guys, this is an area where our world has gone off the rails when it comes to God's design. Today's culture, if you don't agree with me completely, wholeheartedly, then you're my enemy and all of your ideas are stupid and they're wrong. The ability to agree to disagree agreeably is totally lost. I want us to start changing that narrative within our circles, right? Difference of opinion isn't a bad thing. It's actually part of God's design for the church, if you think about it. Paul talks about how the church is made up with lots of people with different gifts and different callings, and that is so that the body become a complete and functional unit. Now, if we all agree on everything and all the time and everything was in the same opinion, we'd have a very narrow worldview, and we'd also be blind to potential dangers that are coming down the road. Having a lot of different voices with a lot of different perspectives is not a bad thing at all. We need to learn how to live at peace with those that might not share our opinions. The life lived peacefully with those who disagree is going to enhance the world. Those are the people that are, going to, are being salt in the tasteless world that we're in right now. Guys, tonight we have looked at the first aspect of salt, its ability to season or to enhance flavor. We talked about uh, a couple of ways that we can enhance the flavor of environments around us. Kindness is, is an easy way for us to enhance the world. Being fresh in our faith and not letting worldly behaviors make us stale is another way that we can make sure we're enhancing the world around us. And finally, living at peace with those who share different opinions is another way that we can enhance the world and flavor it. When people live out these three simple behaviors, the rest of the world is going to take note. They're going to say that we are the salt of the earth, right? That's a great thing. And when people live like that, um, you're making the world a better place simply by your presence in it. I want to encourage you guys to focus just on one of these, right, behaviors this week don't, and try to put it into practice. I mean, don't try to go like all three all the time. Uh, make a post-it note. We're actually going to do this in our small groups with a, a small salt shaker on it or something to remind you and put it on your dashboard or your mirror just to remind you to be salt in this world this week. Guys, I hope you have a great week. Next week, we're actually going to talk about how salt was used as a preservative and then look at what Jesus wants us to preserve in the world. Praying for you guys. See you soon.